Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1972's What? A film by Roman Polanski, 1972. It is entitled What? This is the cover put out by Severin. It's a Blu-ray. They originally had a DVD out for this film, uh, I believe, some time ago, and... Um, in the past couple of months, very recently, put out a Blu-ray of the film. And there are special features. And here is the back. Here you go right here. And you can see on my Facebook page, the Ten Room Bizarro Facebook page, um, that I featured the lead actress in this film with just some picture, a, a picture of her. And a lot of times I will do that with actors and actresses on the Facebook page. But here, I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like, what? This, it's a film by Roman Polanski that I would say... Man, to say it doesn't get credit is an understatement because typically when people think of Roman Polanski, they'll think of Repulsion. Of course, they'll think of Rosemary's Baby. Um, even some other films like The Tenant and things like that. And one of the things you can definitely notice with Roman Polanski's films is that there is a certain pacing to his films. There's a certain dialogue pacing to his films. And even though this film here is more different than any Roman Polanski film that I have ever seen before. It still has a Roman Polanski feel, in a way, to me, um, that brands it in the pacing and the dialogue, things like that. Although this film is very different than any Roman Polanski film I've ever seen before, and a rather unique film in the canon of cinema in general from what I've seen. And you know I've seen some pretty crazy stuff uh, from this YouTube page. <laughs> so... All stuff I love, of course. Well, let's get into what here, okay? This is a wild, wild film, and you can tell from the title that you're going to be into something early 70s, boundary-breaking cinema without a care in the world. I made some notes here because I definitely needed some notes, and I put them up here so you might see my eyes drift up occasionally and things like that. But this is essentially a movie about a girl who winds up randomly in a Mediterranean villa in which she, like an Alice in Wonderland character, discovers the rooms and the people who stay there. Was that, a, was that a good summary? Because I find a lot of parallels with this film with Alice in Wonderland in many regards. And actually some of my favorite films always have that vibe. Even the film Private Parts 1972, same year, Paul Bartel directed though, that I have on this YouTube page, and Ryman, Cheryl in that film plays an Alice in Wonderland character of sorts to me. But in this film, really so much so, but put it in the form of a Mediterranean villa. Wow, this is interesting, right? Already. We have sexploitation, surreal, bizarre, comedy, chaos. Genre-breaking, film-breaking chaos. This is what... So let's get into it, folks. The first thing I want to say is uh, I want to talk about the music. Now, essentially what we have here with the music is we have orchestrated Italian-sounding music um, and a couple piano pieces that are actually seemingly played live and have a very integral part of the storyline. Now, the interesting thing about the orchestrated Italian, very Mediterranean-sounding music in this film, the score of this film is that it's used extremely sparingly. The score in this film is used very, very sparingly, so much so that I kind of lost track of it and then realized later on that, my gosh, there does not seem to be a lot of music in this film. And even if there were, even if I'm slightly mistaken, it still seemed like there was no music in the film. And, you know, and, and as I was watching it, you can really sense the, uh, the open-endedness in just the natural sounds and the dialogue and sometimes just silence in the natural sounds just the sounds of the mediterranean villa which is playing and in the sounds of the of the guests in the different rooms of the villa it, those things are really they become the score they become the soundtrack it's the sounds that our lead actress is hearing in the villa and that she, in, the, in the beauty of the beach outside and the emptiness and yet at the same time, the chaos of the characters, and yet the emptiness and the abandonment of the characters. You're actually, that becomes your score. That's actually what you're, what you're, um, 
That's the music of the film. That's the music of the film. Um, the sound design is really filled. The sound design becomes the score. The sound design is, is filled with the sounds of the villa. And it really reminded me. This is, this is the, I, I mentioned Alice in Wonderland. Now I'm going to mention another children's story that I loved. And I still do. Called The Secret Garden. The Secret Garden. Made a couple films about it. Hallmark film. Then a Disney film. But the book. It's based on a book. And The Secret Garden. I had parallels with what in the secret garden the sounds of the of the howls down the hallway of the villa as the sound of the howls are heard down the hallways of the seemingly abandoned mansion in the in the story the secret garden and so you have that kind of aspect and even the lead girl in the secret garden the same type of Alice in Wonderland type of vibe but that sound design, that spooky type, but not spooky, but spooky, mysterious, unchartered territory sounds down the hallway. And now I'm going to leave my room and find them and search them out. Okay, there's a sound design for this film. Um, Style-wise, boys, I mean, obviously, there, there's a ton of style. I mean, if you haven't already could notice from what I've been saying so much about the film, there's a ton of style in the film, okay? The opening credit sequence has this really unique uh, way of using a notepad, okay? Um, there's a breaking of the fourth wall uh, in a very sucker punch way for the viewer uh, that sums up the chaos of this film. Now, of course, there's a lot of... There's a lot of fourth wall breaking in films, especially in the 70s, even Alejandro Jodorowsky's uh, uh, Holy Mountain at the end and, and things like that. And there's tons, you know, um, a, a lot of ones that I've even mentioned on this YouTube page, like a lot of Franco films like Sex is Crazy. And, but this is a film that does it in a sucker punch way you were not expecting involving the title of the film in a way. And it really sums up the chaos and the boundary breaking cinematic you know uh, cinematic chaos of this film um there's great cinematography uh roaming cameras and through the architecture and the environment I mean let me tell you the environment is unbelievable this is a mediterranean villa this place is beautiful it's gorgeous it's real it's it's obviously not a set um I don't even think they use sets for the interiors. It could be wrong. I mean, this looked like a real place. Beautiful steps, beautiful beach, beautiful rock formations, uh, beautiful mountainous areas. I mean, it was just unbelievable views from porches. And it just, it seemed like true freedom, true relaxation, true vacation. That's what it seemed like to me. Um, there was this wonderful shot of a mirror at the beginning of the film, near the beginning of the film, and slow moving down the hallways, which really links to the sound design of the film and the sound becoming the music of the film. So the camera really solidifies that idea of the sound design in the style and the, the music. Okay. Um, like I said, in terms of environment, we have. Uh, uh, body of water and ocean we have beautiful villa we have the trees we have a beach lush everything is so lush and it's in that reality of the environment that there is a uh, that sets up in some way it also is a surreality the real is also surreal it's so real but it's also surreal okay and that is something that's very, very interesting in this film. We're dealing with the real. We're not dealing with anything really out of the ordinary. But it's in that, it's in that, you know, real characters, a real natural environment that things are surreal. Okay. Um, an empty dining table. Uh, eating outside on a ping pong table with a, a whole lobster and a whole fish okay this is this is some of the environment here this is a film of characters my gosh is this a film of characters um everybody was an amazing actor in this film i mean really um very very i mean if the actors were not good i mean they are driving this film i say that a lot in the films that i review on this page but that's the truth it's the truth 
This is another one. The characters are driving this film and the environment is driving this film, but the characters are the environment. The characters are mixed with the beach and the, and the villa. And the acting is just unbelievable. But at the same time, the dialogue is very surreal. Very surreal. You almost could picture it coming out of a mouth of one of the characters in an Alice in Wonderland story, okay? Um, there's a priest. There's a pimp. There's a sex addict. There are rapists. There are role, sexual role players. There are vagina hounds. What? Yes, and more. These are the characters of this film. Okay, sexually, because this, this definitely has a sexploitation core of this film. Sexually, um, we have full nudity in the film. Uh, mostly the, I would say though, with the full nudity, the, mostly the sexuality of the film is in being almost naked. Uh, the sexuality of just a shirt being bottomless or being topless or just pants, you know, being topless. Wild fetishes in this film, folks, that will make you feel very normal, maybe. Wild humping, wild role-playing, the wildest role-playing I've ever seen um, so far in a film. And violence and humor and sex mixed together in a very, very dangerous cocktail that 2016 would never like. Um, there's even comedy involving a rape scene. Wow, right? All in this film here. The Secret Garden, Alice in Wonderland, sex, philosophy. Yes, there is philosophy. Note the Nietzsche book that's noted somewhere in the film. Constant entertainment in sucker punches and not what is going just like the sucker punches and the entertainment you don't know what the hell is going to happen next you really don't know what's going to happen next this is a 110 minute film it's very dialogue driven very very dialogue driven and the pacing is in the dialogue driven and it's it's slow in that it's slow paced it's relaxed it's, it's as relaxed as the mediterranean villa folks and it uh it sucker punches you the surrealness of the dialogue, the surrealness of the characters, yet the realness of them and the environment and the sexuality of it all is so surreal. Um, chaos, weird, insane, unexplainable, and sexy. This is what? A film by Roman Polanski. I think the most adventurous Roman Polanski film I've ever seen and one of the wildest I've seen in general. Where art house meets sexploitation, meets sleaze exploitation, meets indie art house again. Thank you so much for watching the Ten Room Bizarre YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Please feel free to check out all my other YouTube reviews on this page. And uh, please feel free to check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Thank you and good night.